This is Plant-Based Briefing, How to Cook the Perfect Baked Potato by Mary Margaret Chappelle at ForksOverKnives.com. And I'm Marian Erickson, host of this curated content plant-based podcast, where I search the internet for a variety of articles on plant-based and vegan living, get permission, and read them to you here in about 10 minutes or less every weekday. Today's article is a nice light one after a few heavy episodes about the treatment of turkeys coming up towards Thanksgiving. But it's basic good information as well. Baked potatoes are amazing. I've learned some things in this article. And I love to have a batch of vegan cheese sauce in the fridge to top baked potatoes, throw some broccoli on there. I'll put a link to that in the show notes, actually. It's a modified version of Jill's 5-Minute Game Changer Cheese Sauce, which you can Google and find on YouTube. But now let's get to today's plant-based briefing. How to Cook the Perfect Baked Potato by Mary Margaret Chappelle at ForksOverKnives.com Baked potatoes are one-ingredient wonders that require no recipe, no work, and no doctoring up to be absolutely delicious. Here are all the selection, prep, and baking tips that make cooking them even easier and absolutely foolproof. Baked Potato Science Three things make a baked potato different from a boiled, steamed, or roasted spud. Skin, starch, and steam. As a potato bakes, its skin traps in moisture, which is absorbed by the vegetable's starch granules. Then as the potato heats up, that moisture turns to steam and expands, causing the starch grains to rupture and separating them into the light, fluffy flesh we associate with a perfectly baked potato. The expanding steam is also the reason why you should always prick whole potatoes, otherwise they can burst open while cooking. To scientifically test for perfect baked potato doneness, use an instant read thermometer to check the internal temperature has reached 208 to 211 degrees Fahrenheit. At that temperature, the white starch granules will have absorbed all the moisture they can, then burst and become soft. Tips for a perfect baked potato every time. These hints take out all the guesswork and guarantee fluffy, light, flavorful results. Number one, pick the right potato. The higher the starch content, the fluffier the potato, so large, high-starch russet, or Idaho, or Yukon gold potatoes are your best bet. Waxy potatoes, such as red-skinned and fingerlings, are lower in starch and work best in recipes where you want the flesh to remain firm and moist. Choose medium to large potatoes with unblemished skins and no signs of cuts, sprouts, or eyes. When baking several potatoes at a time, select spuds that are similar in size so they will cook in the same time. Number two, don't skip on prep. Give the whole potatoes a good scrub under running water, then dry them with a dish towel. Pierce the potatoes all over with a fork. The drying step eliminates excess moisture, and the pricked holes let steam escape so the spuds won't burst open as they bake. Number three, use an oven that's hot, but not too hot. Potato baking temperatures range from 350 to 450 Fahrenheit. The sweet spot seems to be at 400, the temperature that cooks the potato all the way through and crisps the skin without singeing it. That said, you don't need to strictly adhere to a certain temperature every time you bake a potato. If you're baking a casserole for an hour at 375, you can just put a few potatoes in the oven alongside. They may take a little longer to cook, but will still be delicious. And number four, check for doneness. Baking potatoes come in many different shapes and sizes, so it's always best to make sure a baked potato is cooked all the way through before serving. Simply slide the tip of a knife or skewer into the thickest part of the potato. If it pierces the center easily and meets no resistance, your baked beauties are ready to serve. You can also use an instant read thermometer. Inserted into the center of the potato, the temperature should read 208 to 211 degrees Fahrenheit. Should you wrap baked potatoes in foil? Wrapping potatoes in foil is necessary when grilling them because the direct heat can char their skins. Otherwise, it's optional and a matter of choice. Foil will prevent potatoes from drying out while they're kept warm, one of the reasons restaurants serve their baked potatoes in foil, but it will also leave the skin soft and moist, not crispy. Is a skewer necessary? Threading a metal skewer through the potato isn't essential, but it helps transfer heat to the center so it will cook more quickly. Cooking Methods 21st century kitchens offer so many options for baking potatoes, from the conventional oven method to small appliance options like multi-cookers, slow cookers, and air fryers. Oven. The classic baked potato method delivers fluffy potato texture and crispy skin. Instructions. Place scrubbed, pricked potatoes directly on the rack of a preheated 400-degree oven or toaster oven. 
Bake 60 to 90 minutes or until easily pierced with a knife tip, fork, or skewer. Microwave. The uber-convenient method can yield a creamy potato for one in just 10 minutes. Instructions. Microwave one scrubbed, pricked potato seven minutes on high power. Carefully turn the potato over and microwave two to three minutes more or until easily pierced with a knife tip, fork, or skewer. Tip. For fluffier flesh and crispier skin, you can also take the potato out of the microwave after 7 minutes and finish it in a 400-degree oven for 15 minutes. Instant Pot or Multicooker Technically, multicookers steam rather than bake potatoes, but they're useful when you'd like to quickly cook a family-sized batch of spuds, and they can keep cooked potatoes warm without drying them out. Use this method when you'd like to cook a family-sized batch of potatoes in less time than traditional baking. Instructions. Pour one and a half cups of water into the bottom of a multi-cooker and set a steaming rack over top. Arrange four to five scrubbed, pricked potatoes in a single layer on the rack, seal, and cook on high power for 15 minutes. 18 minutes if potatoes are extra large. Let steam release naturally. Slow cooker. Slow cookers offer set it and forget it ease and a way to free up the oven for other recipes. The low, slow heat is also an excellent way to intensify the taste of the natural sugars in sweet potatoes. Instructions. Place four to five scrubbed, pierced potatoes in a single layer in a slow cooker and cook on high power eight hours or until easily pierced with a knife tip, fork, or skewer. Air fryer. For crispy skin and to ensure even cooking of smaller potatoes, try baking your potatoes in an air fryer. Instructions. Cook scrubbed, pierced whole potatoes 40 to 50 minutes at 400 degrees Fahrenheit or until easily pierced with a knife tip, fork, or skewer. And outdoor grill. Make room for a few potatoes on the grill and you'll have a piping hot side dish ready by the time everyone sits down to eat. Grilling gives potatoes a delicious smoky flavor and a creamy fluffy texture thanks to the foil wrapping which holds in moisture. Instructions. Wrap scrubbed pierced potatoes in foil and grill one hour or until easily pierced with a knife tip fork or skewer. For crispy skin, unwrap the potatoes and grill five minutes before serving. How to bake sweet potatoes. All the techniques, temperatures, and times listed above can be used to bake sweet potatoes. Sweet potatoes are higher in moisture and lower in starch than white potatoes, so their texture will be slightly different. They will remain creamy and soft when baked, rather than turn dry and fluffy. Be sure to test them for doneness the same way you'd test white potatoes. Our favorite baked potato recipes. You can pair a baked potato with just about any filling and turn it into a meal. Here are some delicious ideas from Forks Over Knives, linked here. 40 plus spectacular spud recipes to supercharge your day. You just listened to How to Cook the Perfect Baked Potato by Mary Margaret Chappelle at ForksOverKnives.com. And I'm Marian Erickson, your host, and we like to eat a lot of potatoes. We like to batch cook them ahead of time and keep them in the fridge and reheat them. And if you're interested, there are actual benefits to doing that. And you can check out episode 241 from nutritionfacts.org called How to Reduce the Glycemic Impact of Potatoes and the Healthiest Type of Potato. And episode 224, Glycemic Index of Potatoes, Why You Should Chill and Reheat Them. I'll put links to those in the show notes as well. And my favorite way to batch cook baked sweet potatoes is to simply slice them in half, place them cut side down on a sill pad or parchment paper, and bake them in a 400 degree oven for 40 to 45 minutes until the skin starts to loosen and you'll see them caramelize all over the baking sheet. They are so delicious. We keep those in the fridge and heat them up and just put a little bit of almond butter or something on top and they are amazing. Makes a great snack or even a great breakfast as well. So please share this episode with anyone who might benefit and thanks for listening.